Okay, in the last video tutorial, I showed how to create a color palette in Toon Boom Harmony and how to fill in a basic character. And what we're going to do this tutorial is take this a step further and show how to fill in a character like this where we have two-tone shadows, like that. Or if you have a character that's got something like this where we have the white of the eye that's separated by, by the skin right there, but you don't have a physical line separating them right there. And this is just a good technique or set of techniques to have in your back pocket either way. And so notice here on my line art, so I have on this layer, that this drawing layer that I called tie downs, uh, this is a vector layer, so I'm not using bitmap on this. And I did tie downs on my line art layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to first copy this down to the color art layer. And you'll also see right here, if I toggle on the visibility on and off of my character right here. I drew the black lines where there are going to be physical black lines on the character right here, but I didn't draw in lines yet for the, the shadow. And just to kind of give you a broad view of what we're going to do in this video tutorial is we're basically going to copy this line art into the color art layer. Then we're going to create a different color pencil and define the shadow lines and then turn off the visibility of that pencil. And so that way we'll have a render like this where we have a clean line between one color and the other. But since that pencil will kind of uh, disappear, it'll look more like that. So that's kind of a broad view of the technique. And I'm actually going to show two different methods. Uh, the first one's going to be a little bit simpler and it's going to work perfectly well, but it's got um, a little less flexibility than the second method. And the second method will require that you have Harmony Premium. So the good news here is I'm going to show you how to use this technique, whether you have Harmony Premium or Advanced. Um, and you'll just have two options and they're really similar to one another. There's just one, you know, really small set of differences, but broad view, they're pretty much exactly the same. So let's start off here. So we've done our tie downs. And if you're not sure how to do tie downs, just reference back to my earlier video tutorial that I have on that. And so I'm going to go up to select right here and it's a lasso selection. So I'll just select everything like that. And so I'm in my line art layer right here. And that's where your line art should always be. And I'm going to copy that with this button down to the color art layer. So I want to select, we're looking over to tool properties and I click on this button. You can also find that button right there and I'll just click on it. And then when I go to the color art layer, it should show blue like this for you with these little yellow anchor points. If you don't see those blue lines, press K and that toggles on the visibility on and off right there. And so the rest of this we're going to do in our color art layer. And so the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to create that, that shadow pencil that we're going to turn off the visibility on. Uh, we're going to turn off its visibility later. So to create that new pen, that sorry, that new color in our color palette. And remember we have kind of our the color palette that comes in harmony. And we in the last tutorial we created our own color palette right there. And so I'm gonna just add a new color. And I'm just gonna call it, I'm gonna use all caps so I can just see it. It'll come up in menus clear. So I'll call this shadow lines right here. And I'm going to change the color to something that's going to be really visible, you know, like a bright red, something like that. And okay. And so let me turn back on my reference right here so that I just have that in the background. And I'm going to draw my shadow lines with this red pencil. And be sure when you're drawing your lines to don't draw like a gap like that. Try to have it overlap a little bit like this so that when you go to fill this in later, it'll just go more smoothly. And I'm also going to do it for the eye whites right here. And when I'm doing this, so I'm using my pencil tool and be sure to have this button turned on right here. This is auto close gaps. We went over this in the, the tie downs tutorial. But this magnet tool can also be helpful right here so that it just snaps to points. But again, I am trying to overshoot just a little bit on these lines right here. Pressing one to zoom out, two to zoom back in.
and I'm just defining the outside of each shadow right here. And remember that this, this, this red line that I'm creating, we're going to remove it or remove its visibility, I should say. It'll, it'll kind of stay there, but it'll just kind of be working behind the scenes. And I can already see this. There's a little gap right here. And so that's going to cause some, some issues for me later, but I'm actually going to leave those on intentionally so that I, show, I can show you how to correct that stuff when that happens, because it's inevitably going to happen when you're, when you're cleaning up your work here. And so we're just defining the shadows right here. And I'm going to have that go right there. And just as a final, I'm just going to really roughly just finish off the outside of this character. OK. So, oh, and there's one area that I forgot. So my character has a shadow in, um, in the eye white right here. So I'm just going to draw two more lines. Right there. OK, so I think everything should be defined here. And so now it comes time to fill in our character here. And so I'm just going to go through my color palette. And remember, I'm staying in this color art layer. It's really important that we stay in there. So I'm even going to turn off the visibility of my reference drawing now. And I'm going to go to the Paint Bucket tool and start filling this in. And there's inevitably, inevitably going to be some, some issues, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So one thing that's really helpful, too, is notice how clearly I've labeled all this. And so it's going to make this step in the process much easier. It only takes a second. And it's going to make life much easier for you when filling things in here. So we can already see I have a, an issue right there where I went in to fill in this shaded area right here, but it fills in on my eye as well. And so to fix that, you can see that that blue line, there's a empty area right there. So when that happens, just click on the paint bucket tool and go to stroke right here. These blue lines are the stroke. That's the thing that we're turning on and off the visibility on when we press K. I'm just going to drag a line through it. And so now when I go back to the paint bucket tool, it should fill in. One other thing is keep an eye out for these little white areas. Sometimes the paint bucket tool doesn't fill those in very well. And you know, it might be to my advantage right now in the paint bucket tool under the tool properties, I have it set to um, not fill in large gaps right here. And maybe if I turn this to no close gap, it seems counterintuitive, but sometimes filling things in goes a little bit easier. You can see there's another gap right there as well. So same thing. So click on the paint bucket tool, go to stroke, close that gap, and fill that in. Remember, these strokes are not going to show up in your render. These blue lines are not going to show up. So just kind of keep that in mind here. And so we're just filling in the character and just working as, you know, as quickly as we can here. Oh, we can see there's another gap. Shoot, let's see here. So you can see there's a little gap right there. Same thing. Stroke just to kind of fill that in. And then we'll try eye white. You can see now that works. I'll go to eye shadow. Those worked. Let's go over to this eye, see if it works over here. Yeah, I'm definitely having some issues over in this region right here. That's where, that, so this is where closing a gap, this setting right here in your paint bucket tool can be really helpful. Did you see that? So I went right here and it was set to there just to help me avoid some of those kind of awkward fill in areas. But you could see it's really hard for me to figure out what the problem is between these two regions right there. So this is where when you're doing the paint bucket tool and you go close large gap, that can be helpful right there and in, in kind of problem solving that. And so we're just continuing to fill in our character. Oh, 
And once you fill in your character, there's inevitably going to be some little kind of white areas that don't fill in. And so you'll need to do like an extra pass afterwards just to make sure that it, it kind of goes through. And so on this one, it wasn't filling in for me. And another thing you can do is if you just click and then drag a little bit, sometimes Toon Boom can kind of figure it out from there. So that's just like a small little technique you can do while you're working as well. And so this is finally starting to kind of come together right here. Oops, and I named my skin base twice right there. That's a mistake on my part. So I need to make sure that's called skin shadow. Fill this in. And then I have the shirt color right here. And so it's looking like this character is now filled in. And so let me go ahead and save this. So I'm just going to go file save. And so now let's show how to remove this red line right here. So I'm going to show two methods. And so the first method is I'm just going to in my color palette down here. And this one's going to be really simple as I just find that that color right there, the red color, I right click on it and I go to edit. So right click and edit. And this window is going to come up where we can change the color of it and all that. And all I need to do is there's this alpha slider, which is essentially it's visibility. And so at 255, it's visibility is at max. And then if I take that to zero, it's visibility is at zero. And so now when I click off of it, you can see that that line disappears and we're in good shape. And you can see that there's some of these little regions right here that didn't fill in. And so they were kind of being obstructed by the pencil. So you'll usually need to kind of go in here and just with your paint bucket tool, just kind of keep an eye out for those, those little areas like that. And just kind of do a pass where you fix up the, the holes right there. And so that is technique number one, right? It's hard for it to be any simpler than that, right? So it's just with the shadow lines that we created, I just right click and you go to edit and it's this alpha slider right here. And so you just turn it on and off right there. And so whether you have Harmony Premium or Advanced, you're gonna be able to use this technique right here. You might even be able to do that technique in Harmony Basic now that I think about it. Um, and so let me show you the second technique. It's the same idea, but it's just a different way of going about it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the node view. And so the node view is gonna be, if you go to Windows, and you go to node view, you'll be able to find it right here. And what I like to do is I like to have it nested up here. And so to bring the node view up here, you just press this plus button and go to not node library, but node view right here. And it's gonna bring this window up. And you can see my nodes are kind of a mess right here. And so I can just select this region right here. And if you press um, this button right here, it's going to organize it for you. So I'll just click this, it's gonna give me a pop-up and this is just the way that it's gonna be spaced out once it organizes it for you. The default is fine. And so we'll just drag it out like that. And so this is kind of an opportunity as well for me just to kind of introduce you to the node library because this is really helpful for compositing, for doing this trick I'm about to show, but also if you're doing 2D rigging, it's, it's helpful for a lot of things here. And so this looks a little complicated at first, but once we kind of break this down, it's gonna be a little bit simpler than it might initially look. So I have these two extra layers that are from an earlier tutorial. I'm just going to delete those. And you can see when I deleted these two layers, they're going to disappear from that node library right there. So I'll just right click and go delete. And so I have my color card right there, which is just my white background. I have my turnaround image, which shows up red because it's a bitmap layer. So that's just my concept art, this, this hidden back there. And then I have this drawing layer that I've been working on this whole time called tie downs right here. And then finally, over here, these are just three nodes that are always going to be on there, composite, write, and display. And so really, we just have these three layers for these three layers down here. And so in my tie-downs drawing layer right here, and let me expand this so that we can just see this a little bit better. And I'm just holding spacebar, by the way, to kind of pan one to zoom out, two to zoom in right here. And so let's show, let me show you a few tricks right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, what's called a color override node and put it between our tie downs 
in our final composite right there. So to do that, you can just press return while holding your cursor over this area right here. You could also go into Windows and you could find this under Node Library as well. Um, so you can also find this in Node, the Node Library panel, but it's much easier just to click right here, press return, and then run a search. So when you press enter or return, you can just run searches here. So it's called color override right there. And notice that they spell color in that way right there. And so we need to get this node in between here. And you can see when I'm dragging it, it's not going right there. And so there's a few ways you can do this, but the easiest way is if you just hold down Option or Alt if you're on a PC on your, your keyboard, and then you just drag it and it's gonna snap it right there. And so I'll just press Edit and Undo. So again, if you hold Option, drag it, snap it right there. And so now we have this node that's between our drawing and our composite right there. And so this is gonna be really easy. So um, all I have to do is with this node, and I'll press two to zoom in a little bit, with this node right here, this yellow box, this is how you kind of get into the settings of any of these nodes. So I'm just gonna double click that and it's gonna bring up this panel right here. And so we're gonna override that green color, right? And so this panel might look a little confusing at first, but it's pretty simple. We just have our color palettes right here. So online demo, that's just the name of my project up here. And so that's the default. Remember, we've been working in our character color palette. And then I'm just looking for my shadow lines color right there. So I click on my shadow lines color. I'm gonna press the arrow that's to the right of it to bring it into this panel. So I'm just gonna click on that. And now that we're here, there's only one more step I need to do. And so I have the shadow lines brought into this panel and I'm just looking for this upside down triangle button right here. I'm gonna click it. And then I'm just gonna to go to color, not visible right there. So again, I, w I found my color palette. I found the shadow lines color. And then over here, I'm just looking for this little arrow right here. And I go down to color, oops, my mouse froze, color not visible. And so when I click on that and I can close this off, you can see those green lines disappeared and they're no longer visible right there. And something that's nice about this is with this color override node, you can just right click it and you can enable and disable that node right there. So I can disable the node and then the red lines are gonna come back. And you can see it's showing up as red right there when it's disengaged. Or I can re-enable it by pressing A or right clicking and going right there and re-enable it. So um, right here, I just press A, D, A, D, and I can toggle it back, and on, back off and on right there. And so I'll just press A one more time to turn it off. And so this is a, a really good way to kind of get introduced to the node view, which can be really helpful for a bunch of different reasons. But it's also a good way to kind of implement this technique right here. And just as a final note right here, um, in the settings, you, you might have it set up so that it's line art and then color art right here. And typically the way I work if I'm filling in a character like this is maybe I use this underlay art for like a bitmap layer if I'm doing sketches. But um, with this overlay layer right here, I can, let's just turn on like the paintbrush for instance and go to highlights. And so remember my character had specular highlights in their eye right here. And so what this enables you to do is you can draw above your line work right there, right? So it, it kind of gives us the ability to, so I can kind of have specular highlights going on right here. And this can all work independent of my line art layer. And I'm just, I'm just painting it in real rough right there just to kind of give you an idea. Oh, and as, as a final note, you know, so we can turn off and on the visibility with this cover, color overwrite node right here, but you can also see, you might have been able to see down here, you can also turn off and on the visibility down here in the timeline. That was kind of bearing the lead right there, right? So um, we have our turnaround. We have this little arrow right here to expand out, and I can turn off and on the visibility of the color override node right here, right in my timeline as I'm working. So that's kind of a, another way that you can kind of manage this node right here and its visibility.